And it's my absolute favorite time of the day, the time where I get to talk about Crystal Reports. This is our monthly Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks webinar put on by the Marks Group. You can find past tips and tricks webinars by going to youtube.com slash user slash the Marks Group. Or you can hit our blog at blog.marksgroup.net. Now today we're looking uh, pretty much at parameters and kind of... Um, some interesting things that we can do with parameters, uh, which, which a lot of people, I guess, wouldn't ordinarily think about. We're going to inspect, or look at rather, how to use parameters with multiple values, not to kind of clean up our select expert a little bit. Uh, I really want to spend some time on uh, looking at how to control report sections programmatically, by which I mean we're going to look at how to hide and reveal these actual sections here based upon an input from a, a parameter actually really handy and uh, the bulk of our time I expect to be taken up by using the all choice within a parameter list and what it's going to allow us to do is give the user the ability to not only put together a custom list of, of parameter choices but two, if they want to view everybody in the database to select the special all parameter, and we're going to hear our select expert to trap for that and act accordingly. So let's jump right in and look at parameters with multiple values. Now in our instance here, what we just have is a customer list. This customer list is being grouped by company name. <clears throat> and every record has uh, a possibility of one of three states. They're in PA, they're in New York, or they're blank. So the first thing we want to do is um, make the report only print, for instance, PA or New York. Well, of course, the easiest way to do that is to go into our select expert and actually just plug that in as a value so we can go ahead and select our state value from our database and say we want state to be equal to New York easy enough to do. We refresh our data and we only have New York's. So on and so forth. So certainly if we wanted both New York and PA we could say the state is one of and then just create a list here. Now this this all should be pretty pretty basic crystal functionality here. Now Let's imagine we want to give the end user the ability to select what states they want to see on the report. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, release our select expert. We're going to delete the criteria out of there. So now we're getting the entire database again. And we're just going to add a simple parameter. Uh, we're going to call this state. And please select a list of states. And our value type wants to be string because it's just a piece of text. It's not something special like a date or a number. So string is pretty, uh, pretty much a safe bet all the time. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and simply hit OK. And now when I refresh the report, oh, I need to add that to my select expert. So OK, making the parameter obviously isn't enough. We need to plug that parameter into our select expert. We're going to do that thusly. Oops. Actually, when I, whenever I go to uh, edit my select export, I go straight to my formula editor. And there, uh, I will, because I like to have complete control over what's going on in my select export. So in this case, we just want our state to be equal to our state parameter. Go ahead and save and exit and OK. And now we can plug in a state. Again, pretty basic crystal functionality. But the end user needs to be able to select more than one state. So it's very easy to enable that by going back to our parameter properties and allowing multiple values here. So now when I, when I uh, refresh the report and select for new parameters, I'm able to write a list of all of the states that I want. So in this case, I'm going to get both PA and New York. And again, this is really kind of basic crystal functionality, being able to use a parameter which will accept multiple values. Why this is really useful is because in our select expert, uh, we only have to reference our state parameter one time. We just have to say our, our database value should be equal to anything in the parameter. 
and as long as we're allowing multiple values it's going to, to grab a record based upon that list of multiple values now where you run into special uh, usability issues with the multiple parameter data is for instance I wanna drag this parameter field onto the report because I want the end user to know what they selected this is a very typical thing to do whenever you have parameters in use you really want to get those on the report somewhere so whoever is reading the report understands what they selected as parameters so if I just drag my state parameter up here I hit preview you'll notice now that because I'm using multiple values in my parameter I'm only getting the first value that I selected for that parameter so in order to get the entire list we actually have to use a formula so I'm going to go ahead back to my designer I'm going to delete that because it does us no good having that there and what we actually have to do is create a new formula I'm going to create this as my parameter list oh looks like I already have it because I think I've already covered this let me just delete that make my new formula and what I actually have to do to, to get all of the values out of that parameter field is I have to actually use what's called the join function in crystal so I'm gonna open up the join function like so and then throw my state parameter to the function the first parameter of the join function is, is the the parameter that has the multiple values and then our second parameter and, and always whenever we're using parameters and functions we're delimiting the parameters by commas so now we're on to the second parameter in our join function it actually lets us specify the separator that will be in use so it's going to list out all the elements of the list of items in that parameter it's going to separate them with the following delimiter in this case we're just going to give it a, a comma encapsulated by quotes indicating that it's just a piece of text I'll go ahead and check my syntax and we're going to come back to this so don't worry too much about it right now but I want to show you that after I pass that parameter to that join function my parameter list let me just expand that a little bit now lists all of the elements in that parameter list uh, kind, of, kind of analogous to uh, like a programmer's array I guess if you're coming from that kind of uh, worldview uh, and again when I when I look at that join function the first parameter or the first parameter of the function is the parameter that we're trying to split and then the second parameter is the delimiter I actually like to put a space after my comma that way it looks a little more natural here on the list because then we have a space between the comma and the next value so now certainly when I refresh my report it's going to list all of the items that the end user is apt to add here and there we go I would really highly recommend whenever you have parameters in use on a report get them on the report somewhere either and maybe in the report header or the report footer because uh, that's always the, the question that comes up during the meeting well is the data accurate well we're not sure because we don't know what parameters the end user selected before, <laughs> before they printed these eight copies of reports uh, for our board meeting okay so now let's look at how to control report sections programmatically what do I mean by that well when we talk about controlling a report section and actually I'm going to release my selection criteria here so we get the whole database again on this report I actually have in my report footer on the last page I have a cross tab which is just a very simple cross tab listing the counts of duplicate company names that I have like for instance three for Acme and one pretty much for everybody else but I just want to show you that that cross tab object is in my report footer so typically what we run into is that, that alongside this and the, the, the report footer is actually where you're going to see a lot of your grand totals, a lot of your, your summary information. And uh, let's imagine that this report could be used by either someone who needs this list for cold calling and someone who needs this list as in a management role who just wants to see the, the subtotals or maybe doesn't want to see the subtotals. So what we're actually able to do, if we go into our format section 
area here, and that's just a right click here on any section. We go to format section. You, you, you'll recall that we do have the ability to hide or suppress any of these sections. So in this case, let's imagine that we, that we want to suppress that cross tab grand total on the report footer. So I can select my report footer here and just tell it to suppress it. Now the difference between suppressing and hiding, uh, they're functionally equivalent. Both of them hide from view the section in question. Uh, Hide is different because it allows you to drill down, whereas suppressing allows you no drill down. And that actually has to do with when you're grouping values and you have that, that little group tree uh, along the left-hand side of your report preview. Uh, we're not going to get into that today. Suffice to say, we want to use the suppress here because that allows us to programmatically control when it happens using this little X2 guy here, which we're going to get into in just a moment. I just want to demonstrate that I'm going to suppress my report footer by just selecting that box. And now when I preview, now you'll first thing you'll see is that when you suppress or hide a section, it becomes grayed or hatched out. Now when I preview my report and I go to my last page, well as a matter of fact, I only have one page because it's a short report. And you can see here that my cross tab is no longer visible because I've suppressed that section. Well, let's take it one step further, you'll notice here that pretty much for all any and all of my section formatting tools that I have here, things like new page before and new page after, I'm actually able to programmatically control them because there's this little X2 button and we know that whenever we see that in crystal, that means that we're able to do something programmatically. So what I'm actually able to do here is suppress that section only if something is true. Well, now we have to think about what we want to be true. Here's a handy trick that I've used a couple of different times. What we're going to do is we're going to create, actually, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unhide this or unsuppress it. That way we can see it again. And we're going to make a new parameter, and we're going to call it suppression choice. And we're going to ask the end user if they want to hide grand totals. I'm going to set some default values because in this case we, we want to be able to expect what the end user is going to enter in here. So we're only going to allow them to put in a yes or a no. And we do not want to allow them to edit the default values. So now what this parameter is going to drive is whether or not we're going to suppress our report footer because right now the parameter is not plugged into anything. So we go to preview the report, nothing changes except for we have our grand totals back. So let's plug this in. So now we're going to go back to our report or our format section, back to our report footer, and now we're going to suppress only if something is true. We're going to use our formula editor. So in this case, we're